Hi, what I'd like to demonstrate in this video is how to repair a Simmons S96 II shower valve and uh, that's dripping. So what we typically do is we just buy a whole complete Simmons shower valve and then swap the guts out. It's cheaper than it, uh, buying the parts individually. So we, that's typically how we do this. So here's our Simmons shower valve. It's in decent condition, and here you can see it's dripping. So the, um, the two major parts that you would need to replace on these is the, um, which you can do sometimes, uh, it's called uh, the TA-10 spindle and the TA-4 seats. Uh, and for those you need special tools for. But um, what happens often is that leaves you with the trim in lousy shape or broken. This trim isn't too bad, I've seen much worse. But what happens often with these is you can't get the handle off and you end up, uh, even with a handle puller, you still can't get the handle off sometimes. And what you end up doing is you uh, end up snapping the stem. So this one I know is gonna come apart because I just had it off. So what you wanna do is take off this little screw cover first. And you expose the screw. Take that screw, the handle screw. We haven't done anything on the pressure side yet, so you have to understand that this is under um, the, the shower valve is still under water pressure, so you have to be mindful of that. And you can see that it's still dripping because we haven't done anything on the water side, so you can. Take this handle off. You can take this suspicion off. And you can take these two screws off. So to go beyond any further, we need to do a shutdown. And you could have done the shutdown first and then take this apart. It doesn't really matter. This is just how I chose to do this. Okay, so now this whole thing will just pull right out. There's a little spline in here. So we're not going to reuse any of this because we have a whole new shower valve. But if you were just going to change the TA-10 spindle and the TA-4 seats, you could reuse most of this stuff. Um, and this foam seal uh, should be replaced. And technically, you should, on a new job, you shouldn't have to use the seal. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, you shouldn't have to caulk it uh, because the seal does take the place of the caulking. But I sometimes caulk them anyway, especially if they have a, a, a movable um, um, fiberglass backing. You know, sometimes that flexes a little bit and water can get behind there. So a little caulking on the top won't hurt anything. Okay, so here we are at the, when the, the shower valve is still on we have not shut done our shutdown yet and uh, so with the Simmons valve what you have to be mindful of is the fact that if you just shut off uh, the cold say for instance and then you open the valve it may give the appearance that the hot is also off and what you really need to do is verify that the water is off at another fixture um, unless you know the building and you know for sure that when you shut it off um, it's off hundred percent so um, I'm gonna do that uh, I'm gonna shut the main off now and uh, this is just a little condo so it's not like we're shutting off a whole building and uh, I'll depressurize it at a faucet and then open this shower valve up so here's our cold water main here that I've put in previously uh, so I'm gonna shut this off but I also flip the breaker for the water heater because if the water heater expands uh, if the water heater comes on with the water main off, you can actually blow the relief valve. Uh, it, it would have to happen before I open the valves uh, to depressurize it. Um, you, you don't want to blow the TMP, so uh, if, just for good measure, we, we shut the uh, breaker off. Here at our faucet, we're depressurizing the main. 
both the hot and the cold. And I'm going to flush the toilet as well. This is going to bring the water line lower than the shower valve. So that'll uh, eliminate some of the water that's going to come out. Now we're going to open the shower valve. You can hear it sucking. So again, because we, we, we already tested that the hot and cold are off, we're good to open this up because sometimes the Simmons valve can be deceiving and you think it, sometimes the Simmons valve can de be deceiving when you think one side is off and it's not. So we're going to go ahead and open up this valve. It's a 12 inch adjustable. Opening it. Sometimes you get a nuisance dribble and instead of it going down the wall, we can just stuff a rag in there and that usually will take care of it. Getting uh, quite a bit of water, but it's not, this is just residual water, not anything we need to be concerned about. So it's going into the tub, not down the wall. So for years, I've been using the Raven Cross uh, to, repair, to repair the Simmons valve. But uh, Simmons just went ahead and updated their new valve so that you need new tools for Simmons. So this is the new kit for the Simmons valves. It's a T37C, and this has the everything you need for both old style and new style. So if you're in the business, you absolutely need this because you're gonna you run into both valves uh, all the time. So in this scenario, we have an old valve and a new valve. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to strip the old valve all the way down to the point where it's just a valve body in the wall. And then we're going to strip the new valve that we bought and put the parts from the new valve into the old. So this is the seat wrench for the front seat. And uh, this is for both valves. So we're going to use, in the old style, we're going to use this end. So now we're fully inserted into the front seat and we're going to use this as leverage. Uh, and then spin this. You could also use a wrench on the end, but this works just as fine. You got to make sure you, you don't drop this stuff in a, in a tub. This is just a condo, so it's not a big deal, but when you work in some high-end homes, you can cause a lot of damage by dropping heavy tools in a finished tub. So this is the front seat which I believe is the cold seat. And sometimes uh, the, the hot and cold seats are all you need to replace or the uh, TA-10 spindle. But it's uh, most of the time you're better off just changing both. This doesn't look too bad actually, but we're gonna change it regardless because it is dripping. Now we're uh, extracting the rear seat. I have an adjustable wrench on this. And you have to push in initially. There you go. And it should just pop. I'm also holding the phone with the other hand. Because uh, I have a GoPro, but it's a little awkward to set up. So I just rather do it with my phone. So here's the hot seat. And let's see if. Oh yeah, that has, well, that has a little ding in it, but that, that might be a new ding. 
we're going to replace it regardless. The next thing we're going to remove and part of the uh, stripping of the old valve is the diverter spindle. So that's this hexagonal head right here. And this tool will extract it. Generally these hexagonal heads are not really on there tight. You can usually just spin them out with minimal effort. They're a little tiny and you, you, we are going to use the one from the previous valve but you can actually very easily either one drop them down the wall so it takes some dexterity to uh, when you reinstall it to not drop it down the wall because uh, even though you have a backup um, you know it's uh, you don't want to drop it down the wall. Next we remove this little brass piece that um, uh, connects the spline of the diverter arm. And then inside here we have our spindle. Diverter spindle. For, uh, so this, uh, this is where you would move the hot water up and down. What I do like about the Raven Cross is that it will actually has a reverse thread on, uh, like an easy out end on it, and you can pull this right out. It's very easy. So here's the diverter spindle, and um, when you order, if you were to just get this part, you have to make sure it's for the correct part because they do make one for a shower only, which is slightly different than this one. Um, so you always want to make sure you get the Simmons valve for tub and shower if you're replacing this. So now this existing shower valve is totally stripped down and we're ready to strip down the new one we got. And we're going to clean up this wall a little bit and uh, get ready to put the new parts in. So here we have the new shower valve that we just bought and we're going to extract all the parts out of this uh, including the seats, everything on it so that we'll just be left with an empty valve and we can just scrap that after. And then we'll use a lot of the trim over, uh, not trim, but uh, we're going to use all the new trim from the new valve on the old valve. So it's when you first walk in here it's going to look like a brand new valve when we're done. The body's going to be original but everything else will be rebuilt. So this avoids having to open up the wall. As you can see, this is a fiberglass shower valve, uh, shower, and um, it's really impractical to open this up, especially when there's a kitchen cabinet on the other side of the wall. You're not just gonna go opening up walls to change the shower valve. So rebuilding it is what really makes sense here. So like anything else in that's mechanical when you remove it you always need two wrenches so in the Simmons valve it's a little awkward but um, I, I always grab a, a 10 inch wrench right here and a 12 inch adjustable right here on the bonnet and um, you have to really hold on because you don't want the valve to go flying So there we go. I got it loose, but I couldn't really hold the camera and do it. So now this, this whole thing will come apart. Now, an important thing to remember when you're removing these spindles is this graphite gasket, because if you lose this it's going to leak very badly. Sometimes they're pressed in there a little bit, but they generally come out pretty easy. So this is extremely important because if you forget this in the old valve, it, you're going to have a leak in the wall. So that's ready to go. Now, now in here you can see the hot and cold seats. And we're going to use the new tools for these because um, the old 
seat removal tool doesn't work on these. So again, always two wrenches. And we have the new seat tool for the front seat inserted. And you can either put in a wrench on the end of this or just use this for leverage. It's just leverage. So it's not, uh, you know, there's no sin if you don't use an adjustable wrench here. It's got a good grip on it. And just pull and then once you get this loose you can put down this other part so it doesn't fall let's spin this cold seat out which is the front seat So the, the Simmons valve um, was fine for all the years I've been in the trade, 30 something years, and I don't know why they just redesigned it. They didn't have to, it worked perfect before the design. So I don't know what their deal is, but this is the cold seat. We're gonna put that in the old valve. Now we have to extract the hot seat. Here's the hot tool into the hot seat and again we're holding back with the wrench and we're just we just uh, loosen that now we're going to totally remove it Ta-da! all these parts will retrofit right into the old valve body now we have to remove the diverter spindle and when you do these body valve body replacements, uh, gut swap outs, you, you don't need the the uh, Simmons makes a valve with internal shutoffs that it's called X, so it will be the 92X, like the Simmons S90. Uh, I'm sorry, um, the Simmons S96 2X. You don't need the X because you're not using the stops and you're just throwing out the bottle and. The, the body so it doesn't really make sense to spend the additional money on the X. Okay, so I'm, uh, I just loosened this part right here. Um, for this I used a, a tiny screwdriver inside the hole. I don't really, uh, I, I don't know why they give us such a, a thin thing right here. I, um, I feel uncomfortable putting the adjustable on that. Um, this is actually my, uh, even though I've been disassembling Simmons valves for 30 years, this is the first time I've used this exact tool. I usually use the Raven Cross, but because of their new design features, I'm forced to use this new tool, which I'm not really uh, crazy over, but it's not my decision. Take out the spline guide. Now, if you're not using the Raven Cross, this is perhaps the trickiest part of this whole thing because these generally don't come out easily. And the Raven Cross has a nice, easy out that pulls that braid out. But you can improvise as long as you don't damage the plastic. So the end of this doodad has a little hook and you can actually just pry this up But I don't think it's as good a invention as the Raven Cross for sure. So after I nudged that out with the Simmons tool, I grabbed it with the needle nose pliers and removed the rest. So now we have a totally empty body. There's no seats, there's no diverter, there's nothing. It's just scrap brass and uh, this goes in the scrap pile and to be uh, scrapped and recycled into something else. Now we're just going to reverse the process and we're going to install all the new, new parts that we took out of the new shower valve that we purchased into the old shower valve body. So it's, it's pretty simple. Um, we're just, uh, it actually goes together quite fast. 
one thing to remember is that you cannot get the hot seat past the cold seat. In other words, you have to install the second seat in the back first before you put the cold one in front of it because you won't get the hot one, the small one through the uh, the front the, the back one through the front one. So the the rear seat has to go in first, then the front, the one in the front, in that order. Okay, so here's the hot seat. Very important you don't cross thread. And these aren't um, difficult to not get in easy. They, they, uh, they, they generally go in super easy. I've never crossed one. Um, and we're just going to give this a tighten. So that's the hot seat in the rear. Now we're going to put the cold one in. There's the cold one on the tool. And then this just goes right in. stops. We'll get some leverage on it. Sometimes they get stuck. If you wiggle it, I'll just give it a whack with the, not too hard, just a tap with a wrench. It often comes right out. Okay, so now we're ready for the stem and the bonnet and all that. So uh, here's our graphite seal. Remember I said this is very important. That's on there. Also what I always make sure is to make sure that the um, the spindle, this part, is inside the uh, the bonnet all the way um, so that it would be wide open. In other words, there's no space right here because you don't want this all the way down when you're tightening this part because you might, um, if it's down too low, you might uh, rupture the threads by forcing them together because it's pinned down in the rear seat. So I'm gonna put that on. Okay, so that's snug, and at this point we're ready, actually ready to, with this off, and only with this off, we're ready to actually turn the water on. Uh, but we, there's no rush, there's nobody in here, so I'm not going to turn the water on right now. But there are some instances where you need to get the water on quickly to minimize the, the downtime, um, but you know, at this point we could if we wanted to put the water on. Now we're ready to assemble the diverter cartridge. And um, this small notch goes up. Uh, a, lot, a lot of times this little, in old shower valves, this, uh, you'll get a mystery leak in a wall and it's uh, often it's because this O-ring leaks. So, um, we're not going to have to worry about that with this new valve. Push that all the way in till the bottom's out. And then we're going to get our spline driver in here. This you definitely don't want to drop this down the wall. So what I what I do with this often is I'm doing this with one hand, but I I put this on a small screwdriver or a small flathead and just catch it like this and just put this in the center. That way you can't drop it down the wall. And then pull it out and push it in. See? Very simple. So that should look like that. And see these splines? This is important. 
You want these splines facing down. If you don't, uh, ultimately they have to go down, but if you don't get them in down initially, it's not the end of the world. You can turn it around. It just makes it a lot easier. And this is the part we don't want to get dropped down the wall. So that's in there pretty good. Now we're gonna get the wrench hexagonal and just turn this in. And tighten that up. Now you don't really have to kill these, just snug them up. Like I said, uh, I don't know why, you know, this, they decided to put this little chintzy thing on the end here. So that leaves you with an option of uh, putting a wrench on something that might break or sticking something in the hole here for leverage. So I choose the latter. All right, and that's it for the tools. Now we just have to throw the, uh, the, the unique Simmons tools. Um, we're also gonna have to shut, set the temperature and we're gonna have to uh, put the trim on. So we're just uh, putting the water back on. Whenever you put the water back on anywhere, you always crack it and then uh, wait for it to equalize, then slowly put the water back on. So I, I purposely left the fixtures open to get the air out, and then I'm gonna go around right now, shut them, and then once uh, the, the pressure's equalized, then I'll open this to full port. Okay, have valves uh, up to full port and we're equalized and I'm going to put the breaker back on for the water heater. Obviously, if you need me to tell you this, the reason why we're flipping the breaker is because this is an electric water heater. If you had a gas water heater, you don't need to flip the breaker. But you would still, uh, I would still recommend turning it down so it doesn't fire. So the way we set the temperature on these is we wait for the water heater to come up to temperature first and then uh, we turn the valve 100% to hot and adjust the screw accordingly. So with now with the, the water running full hot with a the thermometer underneath the tub spout, um, we would want that to stop at no more than 112 degrees in Massachusetts, that's what the code is. So when this is on 100% hot, which is counterclockwise, this stop should stop the hot water valve from opening up further so that there is only 112 degrees coming out of the spout. So let's set the temperature for the shower valve and uh, the, uh, the water's on, the water's back on, we're at full port on the water main, uh, water heater's up to temperature and uh, so uh, basically we're going to open up the valve and uh, get it hot and uh, take a temperature reading. Now to do this, uh, the, uh, the old shower valve handle works fine for this, uh, even though we're going to use a new one when it's finally done. But just for now, this is fine too. You'll, you want to make sure that you're uh, in the uh, shower mode, I'm, I'm sorry, the tub mode, not uh, not the shower. So to do that, you can just temporarily use the old diverter spline. It's a spline because if you look close, you'll see those grooves. And then those grooves met and the angle on the top. See the angle on the top coincide with what, go, what goes in the shower valve here. So when it's to the left, that's on the tub. That's what we want. Check, check this shower valve. So we're gonna go all the way up to hot. Get that warm. And we're gonna use a thermometer. This is a thermometer that we use. Every plumber should have one of these in his truck. It's just a simple thermometer. You could do it digitally. Uh, this works just as well. You can actually do this at the shower head um, also.
Okay, so I calibrated the shower valve hot water to a maximum of 112 when it's full port. And that should only be done by a licensed plumber. Uh, if you're a homeowner or a landlord, you shouldn't be doing this. Uh, you shouldn't be tinkering with this. Um, it should be, it's best left to the professionals. So now uh, we're going to throw the rest of the shower valve together. And uh, because we... Um, a new tub spout and a new shower head to come with the new shower valve we bought we can also change those out if we're so inclined uh, sometimes you uh, in the interest of time or if the old ones are in good condition you don't necessarily have to do that and that's optional uh, and uh, sometimes the old ones don't line up with the new one and you have to modify them One other annoying thing Simmons did with their new shower valves is they added an Allen wrench on the new handles. Uh, they're a 1 8 inch Allen wrench, standard. And uh, But prior to this, you didn't need an Allen wrench to tighten the handle. You could do it with a screwdriver. But uh, yeah, this is the new design. Okay, so uh, there's... Uh That new cover and this um, so to when you put this faceplate on uh, prior to putting the faceplate on you need to install the diverter spindle the the ones on the new valve are slightly different and um, they're actually a lot looser but they just snap right in and you have to align that spline of the valve just like that and you'll feel it you'll feel that this is on there um, if this feels like it's not turning something in the wall then you didn't do it right so now we uh, align the holes and put the screws in you know I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna um, backtrack a little bit because I want to show you guys something so this is the back of the faceplate and this is the uh, the seal that comes with it it's it's factory installed now on these new faceplates and also this uh, other seal uh, is also installed uh, but I it, it uh, if, if it's smooth enough sometimes you don't actually have to caulk the top but I, I caulk the top uh, sometimes depending on what the back uh, the backing is so we have our first screw caught and the screws should go in nice and smoothly they shouldn't be hard they're they're a machine screw and they should just go they should just glide right in and we're not going to tighten this one all the way we're just going to leave it loose because we're going to put the other screw in the other screws in, and we're going to snug both of them up. And you can see here, uh, we're snug, but you can just see how there's a little gap. It's touching on one side. It's not touching on the on the top. Um, so that's a definite definite leak source, and that's due because of the you know there's a slight warpage in the fiberglass. So we're definitely going to caulk this and um, you don't have to caulk the very bottom, just um, most, you know, basically from, um, you know, like seven, eight o'clock all the way down around to probably four o'clock, just uh, most of the shallow valve. Sometimes when, uh, if you notice that the stem is coming out of the wall a little crooked left or right, you can, you'll often notice that there's just enough play to tighten one or loosen the other to straighten that out. So we could tighten this one and loosen this one. To get it uh, straight, but sometimes it's just the original installers that they installed it crooked. That's a little straighter now. You don't want to uh, go crazy because you can, you know, mess something up behind the wall or crack the fiberglass. It shouldn't be too tight to the fiberglass. 
Now we um, have to assemble the handle and caulking. Another minor annoying thing on some of these Simmons valves is you'll notice is that the, the handle doesn't always, when it's 100% off, isn't always vertical like it shows in the picture. So um, well, what will happen is over time, uh, it might, as the seals wear, it might go a little bit past 12 o'clock. But um, that looks about right, right where it is, and it's off. So we're going to nail that down right where it is. We have our 1 8 inch Allen wrench. And we're going to tighten that handle. Again, I'm doing this with one hand. So I'm going to try and do it with two hands. After the Allen wrench is tightened, they have a uh, screw cover button that goes uh, right over that screw hole, which I literally spent 10 minutes looking for because I thought I lost it. Uh, it's a little bit annoying that they made something so small for the shower valve. Uh, I know a lot of guys just totally disregard this part, but uh, it's part of the valve, so I'm going to put it in. Okay, so now we're going to cock the top of this and this is water soluble caulking now we're just going to squeeze it right around get most of the valve and then follow it up with a damp finger and let it sit now it's a little messy going on now but once uh, once you run a wet finger across it, it smooths, smoothens it out. Just get a little water in here. Make sure your fingers are somewhat clean. Just and then you can wipe it. Uh, wipe your finger on the rag and just uh, repeat the process until you get a nice smooth. You don't want to use too much water, just uh, wet fingers, all you need. So you might notice that um, the valve isn't 100% straight. Well, right now it's trickling, but even when it's off, and that's because the, um, the seats are going to wear in, and so I put it a little bit to the left, and as the sweet seats wear in, over time it will straighten out, it's just that it's either going to be too left or too right right now because of the, uh, the, the that's just how the valve is. It doesn't uh, line up, uh, the handle doesn't go 100% vertical when it's off. So if you put it to the right, it, uh, as time goes by, it's going to go even more to the right. Whereas if you put it to the left, over time, uh, eventually it's going to be straight. So now you can see, even though it's still wet um, and there's water there, that I have a nice speed behind it and that'll keep any water out um, because this is a rental tenant uh, situation we're probably not going to uh, update the shower head and shower valve um, I'm going to talk to the owner but it won't be part of this video if we do thank you and I hope you like my videos so there we have it the shower valve is rebuilt and uh, although the caulking's wet, it's, uh, it's good to go after the caulking cures.